important part of understanding our models for beam deflections is how we handle all of this differential equation. Remember from beam statics, the rate of change of the shear is equal to the distributed load intensity. That the rate of change of the moment is equal to the shear. Then we have the moment curvature relationship. And then we have that curvature is then the first derivative of the slope. And the slope, of course, is the first derivative of the deflected shape. Now you'll see the symbol for the slope is given as theta as an angle. And that's because hey, you know, slope is equal to rise over run. So that means tangent of theta, which is the rise over run, would really be what we want to have here. However, in structural mechanics, our slopes, our angles are so small that tangent of theta is essentially the same as theta, at least in terms of radians. And therefore, that's why you see us do that particular symbol of theta as though it were an angle. Right? Again, keep in mind, we're, our governing boundary, um, sorry, our governing differential equation is this fourth order differential equation in the transverse displacement is equal effectively to then the distributed load intensity. We have to integrate this four times. The thing is, is that every single time that the distributed load is not the same function, or that we have other concentrated load effects have, then we have a disruption in the description of this equation. And that means for something like this simple supported beam, pin support here, roller support there, that we have one, two, three, four, five different beam segments. Each and every one of them is going to have than this governing differential equation. But then we're going to have continuity conditions that are going to happen because the slope and the transverse displacement at B must be equal to each other. And then we get something happening here at C, same thing, every little point here. So each segment this is going to be a big, huge key, is going to then have four constants of integration. And two of those will be associated with force situations, and two will be associated with displacement conditions. Some of them will be outright boundary conditions, such as what you would have over here at A. However, what I was referring to before is, hey, right at B, then we know from a displacement standpoint that the slope just to the left of B has to equal the slope just to the right of B. Transverse displacement to the left and to the right just immediately have to be equal to each other. And so when we solve the equations in that segment in AB, the first one, and then also in B, BC, well, we're going to have to deal with these now uh, five segments times four, 20 constants of integration, and we're going to get some of that by pattern matching, what has to happen here. You do the same thing associated with the shear. The shear just to the left and to the right of B is going to be the same. However, that won't be true of the bending moment. They're going to not be the same to the left and the right because of that 10 kip foot. So that, that's applied right there. And you have to figure out, is that a plus or a minus 10 kip foot, that's the difference between those two. Um, and we'll address that in another uh, little video segment.